Hello everyone, I am Jagan. I am a technical specialist at Skilllink taking care of embedded system domain. So in this short video, we will see the different job opportunities in embedded system domain. Before we get into the uh, different job opportunity in embedded system domain, we will understand what is the gap between the academia and the market and what is really expected in the industry and what is not covered at the college level curriculum. So mostly university syllabus covers 80, 85, 86 and 8051 microcontrollers when it comes to teaching embedded system. So there are certain universities who cover LPC21 series of microcontrollers and then C language is covered and not up to even uh, C99 standards. So here I have presented job description from two different companies. One is from a typical startup and one is from a bigger corporate. And uh, both are looking for uh, embedded system job roles with a variety of uh, or with a varied uh, experience. Whereas the first one is for between some 0 to 2 years and second one is somewhere between 2 to 12 years. So the gist here is if you look at the job description, it's very clearly highlighted that the key skills should be C and uh, C++ and uh, protocols such as I2C, UART, SPI, CAN and uh, target platforms such as uh, Atmel, STM, Renesis, all those things should be learned. Whereas on the other resume, if you see serial communication protocols like CAN, SPA, LEN and uh, OS like uh, ATAS and uh, Linux and a uh, hands-on experience with 16 and 32 bit microcontroller and uh, a strong programming on C language. So this is something that is expected from a embedded freshman in the market for fulfilling the role of embedded software engineer and who are, who are actually offering a embedded as a career path or which are the companies who are ideally offering embedded as a career path there are many potential embedded players available in the market it starts from a original equipment manufacturer to a company who makes products and who offer solutions and uh, there are certain companies who focuses much into solutions and services and there are companies like tool vendors. So I have classified uh, the potential embedded uh, players into these four categories. There could be a business that's starting from Renault or Volvo or Hyundai that would be served by a products company completely like Valio or ZF and they would be owning a service. They would be taking a bar offering a service from Tata Alexi, KPIT Technologies. It's like a pyramid of uh, hierarchy where uh, people from tools migrate to solution services, migrates to products and from product people move on to we. At a very large scale, embedded software development is there as a bigger job in, in all these companies. So now I'm going to show you a case study from two different verticals or from two different uh, companies one is like a services industry and one is like a product industry each of them view embedded uh, as a different uh, domain or different career path so we'll consider uh, automotive as an example and we will discuss on the same so first there are certain companies uh, when i say uh, automotive software it is automotive embedded software development business as a entire horizontal so if you consider uh, automotive as a whole horizontal there could be different verticals such as powertrain or EV, ADAS or autonomous driving, BCM, body control module or instrumentation cluster, infotainment system. So out of this, each has its own way of developing the embedded software. Let's say if you see infotainment system, people will use QT, QML based C++ frameworks, which is running on top of a Linux or a Android platform. So members with the skill set of C++, Linux, Android, would be rightly fitting into the infotainment embedded software development domain. Whereas if you see the domains such as uh, powertrain or EV or ADAS, so the kind of uh, software development that's happening there requires a different sort of skill set. Uh, so I have highlighted people working on uh, MBD, power, uh, powertrain or ADAS domain have a uh, more chance of getting into model based development based embedded software or based application development and autos are based based software development. So this is what ideally will happen in powertrain and ADAS domain. Whereas if you see domains such as driver assistance system, which is at the level four, uh, or this level is given by SAE. So level four ADAS or autonomous driving will have a different kind of job opportunities where 
people really are expected to write a system level algorithm in C++ so which either runs on a simulator or runs on a real hardware so there are uh, rask kind of a framework which is running a c++ software stack and which actually helps a car to perform certain l4 driverless features these are different job opportunities that's available in automotive embedded software development and there are many companies who see the entire automotive software development is horizontal and on top of that they have multiple verticals and they even build many products and solutions at each vertical now let's consider other case where we have uh, all embedded business is seen as horizontal so most of the services company that we call it as erd companies are working like embedded is seen as a vertical or seen as an horizontal on top of that you have multiple verticals where uh, there is a large number of team working on automotive there will be a bigger team working on avionics and there will be a dedicated team working on medical instrumentation and energy sector so under each of this domain we have a different embedded product needs to be developed and a different embedded services and solutions need to be offered now let's consider one uh, bigger embedded ecosystem so ideally in this embedded ecosystem you will have uh, the information flow that's happening in the industry are what's happening inside the ecosystem like this so i'm carefully using the word ecosystem it's because it's not owned by one company or it's not done end to end at one organization it is the whole project is scattered across multiple teams across several organization let's say there is a system engineering activity who plans the entire hardware architecture software architecture network architecture and functional safety architecture with several tools such as uh, ibm doors rapsody and uh, vector prevision and uh, they create a big uml logics and follow process like aspice and uh, they build this whole uh, system requirements uh, which is actually passed on to the application developers and the firmware developers so there there could be a system development team who is dedicatedly focusing on the functional software development so members with the model based design skill play a vital role in doing this functional software development they do activities such as algorithm development using simulink and state flow they do model in loop uh, simulation they do code generation and these candidates are the members who are actually aspiring uh, for this career role would be somewhere uh, having experience between zero to five plus years uh, so roughly uh, if you are growing in the ecosystem as uh, the time progress you somewhere between three to six plus years you will be having uh, or you will be in this functional software development somewhere in this experience level and uh, the same input which is coming from the system engineering team is also shared by the base software integration group where uh, members would be working on uh, autosar software stack if it's a dedicated automotive project or there could be several members who would be working on uh, embedded uh, firmware development so the primary skills that are required is embedded ca and uh, bare metal programming and uh, you need to know how to write drivers for uh, multiple peripherals that is there inside the microcontroller so then once this system development is done you have a set of engineers who perform system validation activity if it's application development so people who have involved in the, in the application development are responsible for performing its validation such as model in loop validation software in loop validation hardware in loop validation and if you are working on uh, the base software integration so you will have a fair chance of working as a verification validation engineer who is performing the static analysis on the code base which is developed and unit testing integration testing so all those things so ideally information flow happens from left to right where it starts from system engineering team propagates to system development team and then it propagates to system validation team but people flow generally happens between the system development to system engineering so i think somewhere in this slide i have given a input or i have given certain uh, information where uh, aspiring embedded engineer can uh, claim into the uh, embedded ecosystem from zero to seven plus years and uh, what are different skills that are really required in today's embedded job market i have categorized that into three different verticals or three different uh, groups one is you need to have the below mentioned technical skills and technological skills soft skills so coming to technical skills you need to have a very strong microcontroller hands-on and debugging skills and arm is 
something that's inevitable our architecture should be comfortable and you need to know how to handle interrupts how to write interrupt your own interrupts and how to write your own board support package and how to write your device ever and how to work along with artas and uh, if you are getting a chance to work with linux how to work along with linux so all these things are technical skills which are really really required for a embedded developer and on the technological skills it's and something that's never ending i have curated something that's uh, what is actually trending in the market more than this you can write uh, a number of technological skills so it's something that which you should be keep on reading by yourself so you need to get comfortable with the industrial protocols wireless communication network protocols and test automation tags and uh, off the shelves available embedded stacks and uh, soc based system and uh, really the domain knowledge is also one important so more than everything you need to have uh, some important soft skills which includes focus patience hardware and uh, coming up with very good writing and coming up with very good interpersonal communication skills so all those things are really really required as abo mentioned so if you want to reach for any aspiring embedded roles what skill link is offering skill link is offering three main programs one is a pg program in embedded system for ev application the other one is uh, as a pg program which is going to focus dedicatedly on embedded software development and validation it's a offline program where student can come to our facility and uh, can able to enroll in this program it's ideally starting on 15th of june and third one is we have uh, pg program on ev design and development so all this program will potentially prepare the aspirants to get a job in embedded system role so along with this i'll add one more hint how to really shine in embedded job market so you need to have a cv with best best very best project portfolio and um, all other things are are really good to have things you can open up hacker rank profile and you can solve all the hacker rank problem and you can top the list so that is one thing and uh, you can have uh, a github profile that's a uh, developed where uh, you are doing a uh, 100 days of coding exercise and you are committing a, a daily under lines of program so ideally i'm asking you to cultivate writing code as an habit so that you really love programming and by default in your mindset it becomes an habit so that you can daily practice and you can enjoy and at last to summarize my presentation there is no free lunch everything comes with a real practice and by doing real practice and avoiding shortcuts you can really shine well in this embedded job market all the best thank you